Hi there, and welcome to Mini Fights. I want to start off by saying that this is the second video of a series, so if you haven't watched the first one, click on the top right of your screen now and watch that one first. For everybody else, enjoy! We're going to go through the remaining parts of all of these Yujing miniatures. Right now we're just base coating, you know, just usual thinned out black, and we're covering up all the areas that we're going to do our kind of stylized non-metallic metal on. And as I mentioned in the first video, it's pretty key to keep this black paint thinned out a lot. I use a little bit of flow improver in it as well to make sure that it just really goes on in a nice, smooth, single coat. You definitely can thin it out quite a bit. Just make sure you're in control of the paint. And one thing to note here, we are going to base coat the hair of all the models who are not wearing helmets in the same black. And this model has by far the most non-metallic metal on it. He has a lot of the coil style sort of under armor. Like he doesn't really wear the normal suit that the other guys have. It's going to be a lot of like exposed under armor musculature that we're going to have to paint metallic. So I started to think about kind of what color we could add to this model that would add a little more visual interest and a little bit of a value difference as well. And I landed on, again, kind of following the stock scheme, so I'm not, I'm not saying I invented this idea, <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and throw in kind of a, a whitish gray on some of the various straps and trim. Uh, the Hasean, which is the guy with the, the HMG and the sword, he's the one who has the most of it, so I think it works the best on him. Uh, but the various Zanshi and a few of the other models have some straps and things that uh, we're going to go ahead and put this on. So we start off with Crixbane Highlight, which is kind of like one of my favorite base coats for like a, a whitish grayish sort of tone. A little bit of a warm gray. And then we're going to start working it up by mixing in white. And we're just, I just did two layers, uh, uh, or three layers total, two layers of highlighting on top of the Crixbane. We can see as we get here, the room is starting to tie together a little bit, building up the white in the kind of the same 
light logic as the, the coat that's on the model as well. Uh, the highlights are kind of hitting in the same areas along that same sort of line along the cylinder of the arm. Uh, and that's working out pretty well. Same thing with the, the legs, really. The, the white highlight just ends up sort of being in the middle, uh, as it is the high point. And I think this white, I'm going to incorporate this more in my later Eugene models that I add to this army. Uh, I think it really just kind of zazzes that stock scheme up a little bit, and I'm going to work more and more of it in as I go. Definitely going to become a sort of a tertiary color for the majority of, of the stuff I paint, I think. I really like the way it pops on the very colorful, warm, and cool tones these models are having on them. The white really kind of creates its own contrast by, by not being saturated with color. It's sort of a zone of no color on top of warm and cool. So here's where we go back and just clean up where we were a little gung-ho. There's a lot of like little inset lines down the legs of some of these models, so we're going to go ahead and get those cleaned up where we've gotten a little paint into them, make sure those uh, really pop nicely. We're also going to clean up around the white that we did to make sure that the white didn't bleed out onto the other areas. Now this is kind of my Angel Geraldes style non-metallic metal super shortcut anybody can do it version. His stuff is really good. He does a lot of layers. Uh, it really pops beautifully. I'm not as talented, and I like to get stuff done in a quicker fashion because I'm not painting for display. So I tend to sort of overbrush with various uh, ugly looking brushes, old brushes, as you can see here. Uh, they, it kind of gives a streaking effect, which metallics sometimes reflect in streaky fashions. And that's a real trademark of the Infinity look is to have that metallic that has those sort of uh, streaky kind of either scratches or, or, or shine that is kind of in streaks. So I'm going to emulate that by throwing on a base coat that's essentially almost sort of a dry brush really. I'm just kind of lightly running the brush over areas and, and letting the variety of the brush tip create the streaking. However, the next step, which is what I'm doing here, gets much more precise. This is really the edge highlight step. It's entirely up to you how many steps you want to put between that brushy step and the edge highlight. I jumped right from uh, from one to two, basically. I didn't do any interim steps. I just did the little brush over, and now I'm doing the edge highlighting. And with you know with a non-metallic metal, your edge highlight should be fairly complete. You know, if you're highlighting a square, you kind of highlight all the edges of the square, whether the light is hitting them or not, and that creates sort of the reflective nature of metal. But I think th this is a very effective technique, and on the table especially, it really pops out nicely and looks metallic and reflects uh, without having to put in the sometimes nightmarish amount of effort that non-metallic metal can really create. A lot of people don't do it because they look at it as a process that takes 17 layers. And, uh, you know, on small areas like these guns, uh, that's not necessarily true. This model is really covered in a lot of kind of beautifully complex shapes. The bow has a ton of interesting stuff going on. The kind of cross of the short sword and the quiver. There's just a lot of interesting points where light would hit. A lot of cool surfaces, the, the, the flechettes of the arrows. Just, just a really neat model. And the non-metallic metal kind of really makes some of that stuff jump out. On these sort of power armor dudes, these heavy armor guys, obviously you got to get that kind of coiled look. Because it's cylindrical, I tend to run that highlight just kind of right down the middle in a row. Just hitting the peaks sort of above the cylinder, wherever you think the light would be hitting, generally central, since it is a sort of a rounded surface. Same thing with these pipes around the neck. You just want to hit the peak of that round area.
So on this gun, I'm, I'm using the where the, the sort of overbrush, dry brush hit uh, as sort of the lead area for the, the edge highlight. But you still have to sort of, like I was saying, you got to kind of complete the shape, highlight the entirety of each area you're working on, throwing in a little tiny streaks as well with the white. And uh, really for three layers, it, uh, it creates a nice volume and a nice reflective look with what I would say is a, a you know, acceptable amount of effort. This dude is really covered in those sort of round, coiled shapes. Uh, and they take this technique beautifully because they're very small. So there's, the lack of layering really doesn't matter at all. And kind of the same thing with the cylindrical exhaust vents. You're just gonna sort of hit those, the center of the cylinder and the line that runs down it. Just where you think the light should go. And that's where I decided I like it. And it seems to make sense visually to me. It looks nice and reflective. So the stock Eugene scheme does have a little bit of red in it. And I noticed that the heavy armor guys have this sort of triangular. I think that's like a universal symbol for like exhaust or heat coming out or something. Uh, some of them have it on their wrists. So I put it on the wrists of both of the heavy armor guys. The Ninja, I'm just kind of freewheeling with. The, the scheme that the uh, the stock scheme is, is definitely not like mine, but that's okay. I decided after some deliberation to run like a red stripe right down the center of the helmet. And I'm really happy with the way that came out. I did sort of a double stripe on this guy's shoulder. I kind of wish I had just done a central single stripe. It's okay though. I think the, all the striping looks pretty decent. And it does seem to contrast pretty well with the yellow, even though they're both warm tones. I go back and clean it up a little bit, put shades back where they're supposed to be, put highlights back where they're supposed to be on the red. Like I, I worked the red a little bit up and down, not too much though. Red, you gotta sometimes just let it lie. So one thing I've done here is that I've created models that have three separate dark areas that go from black up to a different color. So with the hair, I went with more of a natural kind of a khaki tone. Uh, Hammerfall khaki is a very like desaturated, I guess it's kind of a gray, kind of a brown. Just mix that with the black a little bit and applied some streaking and highlights to the sort of volume of hair. A lot of people, both in drawing and in miniature painting, make the mistake of trying to sort of create hair with like a streaking, either a drawing or, or the, the paint stroke. And hair really should be painted in volume. Hair is a shape, kind of, you know, almost like the Lego hair that would be on top of Lego guy's head. Ultimately, that's kind of what hair is on a miniature and what it is when you're painting it. And you, you should highlight it like it is just a simple shape. Then as your final step, as we'll get to here as we move on, is you, you put in a little bit of texture with like kind of the highlight. So you can apply the highlight in like a little bit of a streaky nature to imply, oh yeah, that's hair. And hair at the highest point where it reflects sometimes does show the actual individual hairs. But the idea of like streaking a bunch of lines for hair right out of the box is not the way to do it. So keep that in mind, volume first, Final highlight is where you put in your little bit of texture. And that applies to not just human hair, but things like animals, um, 
most famously horses. If you look at really well painted horses, you'll see like a little bit of hatching to imply the fur, but not hatching over the entirety of the model. And we're just going in here and base coating the flesh. This is a pretty boring step, but we got to go back over. The flesh areas are all covered in, you know, the base coat of the orange and overspray and all kinds of other errors. So we're just going to work that in and we'll clean up any kind of edging around the hair to make sure that there's kind of a nice defined line between the flesh and the hair. Uh, luckily, most of that was kind of already done here, thankfully, when I, when I blocked it out in black. Now, a lot of people have different approaches for flesh. On the, these models, because they're not display models, I did not get into painting pupils. I pretty rarely do that, frankly. It's just not my cup of tea. I think it's ultimately a technique that very rarely comes out good unless you are very skilled, and at that point, you're painting at a display level. And I don't, I, I play games. I don't, I don't display stuff. I started off with uh, Midland Flesh, which is a really good kind of pinkish flesh tone. From, from Privateer. You'll notice I use a lot of Privateer paints. I think they cover very well, and I find that I, when I'm in a situation like this where I wanna just cover up a, a kind of a dark area uh, in one shot, they're very good for that. So ultimately the steps here were base coat with the Midland, work a little bit of a green into the Midland for the shade, kind of build that up, and then the highlight on the flesh was ice yellow mixed in with the Midland. And, you know, frankly, uh, it's good enough for tabletop quality. It's, you know, the, the detail of those faces is fairly small. They're just small miniatures. So I didn't go completely nuts doing, you know, cheekbone blends and forehead blends to the level that some people do. But you're welcome to do that yourself. Now here's like a, a real chance to add some pop to this group. I kind of consider this guy the leader. I don't think he actually is in the game, but he's sort of the leader of the miniatures to me. He's just got a leadership pose and a leadership sword. And for a leadership sword, it's gotta be a cool glowing bit. I decided to go with purple as just a natural, nice complement to the yellowy orange. It also works very well with that greenish tone of the, uh, the cloth. You can see I, I, of the various steps I did with airbrushing, covered it with a little bit of transparent pink to get us back to sort of a pinkish tone. And then I, I kind of had a fist fight with the miniature for about 20 minutes trying to get the edge highlighting done. Sometimes edge highlighting swords can just be uh, no matter how talented you are, it can be pretty miserable. It's just, sometimes it's just hard. You're just using the side of the brush and praying that the line that you get on there is thin enough. And sometimes you go back by hand and clean it up like I did. Ultimately, we got to a pretty good result. Added some streaky highlights, but I'm not gonna lie. It was a, it was a little bit of a fight. That's gonna wrap the whole thing up, man. Uh, all we're doing here is just painting some black over the bases. And I am not doing any kind of basing on these in this video. I have not decided what I want to do with basing, whether I want to keep them on these 32 mil bases and do something to them, or if I want to add some kind of fancy sculpted base. There's lots of options out there for sci-fi stuff. Uh, Infinity bases, there's a, some really cool stuff out there. Put them on the human-powered Lazy Susan, let you guys take a look. We're going to call this project done for now. I am definitely going to re revisit this project later. I have some miniatures in mind. Uh, I, there's a tag, there's a sweet like transforming tiger bot thing that I really want. Uh, there's a few other really cool models that I'm definitely going to add to this uh, crew here. Probably get it up to, you know, 10 or 20 models where I can play games of Infinity or other sci-fi games with them. I appreciate you all hanging out with me on this journey. Hopefully it was informative and you, you picked up a, a few things. And uh, if you have any thoughts for me, constructive criticism, thoughts on the way it's filmed, uh, any of that stuff, I'd love to hear it. Shoot me a like. If you like these videos, subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.